Hello. Hi. Hi, Dr. Yanis. How are you? I'm very well. How are you, Nada? Nice I'm to good. connect it's, with you. <laughs> it's such a pleasure to have you on my live. I've been waiting for this live for quite some time. Oh, thank you. It's my honor. It's great pleasure for me as well. Uh, Honestly, I've been doing some research about you and it's been really nice reading. The more I read, the more interested I am in the brand and, you're, and hopefully meeting you some, uh, at some time in London soon. Uh, that would be fantastic. Please come and see us here in uh, Harley Street. <laughs> Definitely. So I, I want to introduce you first. You're an MD and you, are, you have a British and American certification. Um, that is correct, studied, yes. Yeah, and you studied in Miami, right? So I'm a plastic surgeon. I finished my studies in Miami, in the University of Miami. I became yeah. board certified in plastic surgery and I have uh, specialized in craniofacial and microsurgery. And then microsurgery, you did a lot of, uh, you, you studied in University of Pittsburgh, right? That's right, yes. I've been so doing spent, my research. <laughs> say that again? I've been doing my research. Yeah, Pitt, Pittsburgh is a big center for research and plastic surgery. And I was very fortunate to spend uh, almost two years there. I was doing part-time research in um, growth factors. So things that actually can help us heal faster, but also, of course, doing surgery and uh, especially microsurgery. Okay, well, how, how did you decide to move from the States to London? And I know you opened your practice in Hardy Street, in 111 Hardy Street in 2001. That's correct. Well, I'm Greek uh, by birth. I, w I grew up in, uh, in Athens. And my dream was always to come back to Europe. Uh, so for me, the United States, um, uh, it's a great place and it's a, an amazing uh, educational platform. However, uh, in terms of culture, I always look to, go, to come back to Europe. Uh, originally, I had a practice in Athens as well. Uh, so it was between uh, London and Athens, but eventually <clears throat> my London practice became um, too busy for me to be able to travel. And uh, indeed, in 2001, I established a practice in London, which I think is a great uh, hub. It's a, a huge metropolis with uh, connections all over the world. It gave me the opportunity to develop um, an, an American style plastic surgery clinic that wasn't there before. Yeah, I agree, actually. London is very metropolitan. It's, it's, it's also very central. So let's talk about, uh, I was reading, you were saying that you started 111 Skin when you started uh, realizing that you, you want to look at the healing process after surgery. That's right, okay. yes. And that was yeah. your main concern, how patients heal after surgery. Correct, correct. As, <laughs> as I've already mentioned, I was always interested in, in healing and my research in Pittsburgh uh, with growth factors <laughs> had uh, prepared me for the clinical work. So for me, uh, of course, doing a, my work is the most important thing. I'm a very detailed a perfectionist when it gets to facial plastic surgery. I do a lot of uh, facelifts, rhinoplasties, eyelid jobs. So, uh, but for the patient, the difficult time <laughs> exactly. is really the first few days after surgery. They need to get all the help they can to heal faster, to um, come back to normal as soon as possible. So I was always interested in finding uh, products and uh, methods that will help achieve this goal. Uh, and that's where um, I started developing my skincare. That's amazing. You're also very known for the Y lift. Tell us more about the Y lift. So the Y lift is the evolution of a uh, technique <laughs> Sorry, I use for, for facelifting. So the majority of patients I see when they come to see me for facelift, they, they do this. They say, doctor, I want yeah. to do this. <laughs> so the, fa <laughs> the Y facelift does exactly that. It's a combined face and neck lift, but I give special importance to defining the jawline. So I use this uh, Y-shape uh, suturing and suspension of the muscles inside that create this look. And it's especially good for people who work a lot in front of the camera. We know that the camera tends to round out our faces, so we need exactly. to have this extra definition, yeah. But just a question, the Y lift procedure, how long does it last and how is it? Is it a big surgery? Is it, is it a facelift or? It is a facelift. It requires approximately two hours, but it's a day case, so people go home the same day. Uh, the, the dressings come out after two days, and the suits come out after one week. So most of my patients, after a week, start to go back to work and to their uh, social events. And regarding, but, do you do, what if a client wants to do the lower part and not the upper part? Do you actually can do it on certain parts of the face, or does it have to be the whole face? 
Well, it, it can be modified and it can be really customized according to the needs of the patient. So it's, it's not one recipe fits all. Every facelift, every uh, intervention needs to be tailored around the patient's uh, anatomy and the needs and the expectations. Okay, that's amazing. I wanted to ask you as well, what are, what, what, what are you, what's your opinion on threads? Because, you know, it, in, in Europe, they're very pro-threads. In the U.S., everybody's very against threads. In the Middle East, everybody's very pro-threads. I want your opinion on it. Do you, do you believe in doing thread threads? Is it part of your practice? It is part of my practice. And most of the times I, my nurses do now because I train my nurses how to do threading and they're very good at that. Okay. Uh, I believe it's, it's an in-between treatment. So it's not, uh, uh, of course, as effective, not even close as a surgical facelift. But for some people who are not ready to have a facelift or who are uh, not fit to have surgery, the, the threads can be a good alternative. Uh, the results last approximately a year, a year and a half, and uh, we do this with local injections of anesthetic. So it, it's a simpler procedure, but it requires a lot of technical skill from the practitioner because you need to really analyze the face well, understand what you need to do on the uh, uh, inside of the face with the threads, and then do it from the outside. So it's not as easy as it sounds. It needs to be really uh, done by someone with a lot of expertise and understanding of the anatomy of the face. Yeah, because it's like Botox. You can't fix it once it's there, right? It's not, it's, you have to... It's most of the times, yes, if there is some, I mean, there are things that you can fix. So if there's a smaller symmetry, you can add some threads and then rebalance it. Um, but yeah, it's better not to go uh, start with having problems. <laughs> Okay, yeah, because you know, like you know, I always love sharing um, surgeons' opinions on on certain things because you know, as you, I'm sure you've seen many botched jobs when coming to your office, so it's, it's so sad. So I always say it's nice to have an informative platform to share such information. So yeah, I need to make a note about the threads. So the yeah. two categories: there's the permanent threads, which do not absorb. And they are the, the ones that we use that are medical grade that they absorb with time. So it's important not to do the permanent ones because the permanent ones can cause really serious problems and they're very difficult to fix. So that's the very important point. Okay. Another thing, doctor, I wanted to ask you, uh, how did you decide to become a surgeon? When did you decide you want to be a doctor? Uh, well, I, I was in medical school. In medical school, you go through training and go exposed in different specialties. And uh, during that time, I realized that I like surgery. I realized I like to do things with my hands and give immediate results to my patients. Uh, and then the natural evolution was that to discover plastic surgery. I, as I said, I was uh, born and raised in Athens. And back then, plastic surgery was not very well known. A lot of people didn't have access to plastic surgeons. So that gave me even more of a motivation to go for it. Yeah, you, you said in one of your quotes, you said your grandfather told you whatever you choose to be or do, do it best. So it seems that your grandfather was a very uh, close uh, person in, in your life. Uh, yes, indeed, it was. We are a very close to meet family. Um, my mother comes from the island of Crete and my father is from Athens. I, did, I love it. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we always um, uh, have these values about family and about uh, being the best you can and providing service to your patients. My, my parents are both doctors, by the way. So, ah, amazing. Yeah. Um, you know, I actually stayed in Crete once in a, and I rented an Airbnb villa and the two, the two parents, uh, the two owners of the villa were two doctors and their son was a doctor as well. There are oh, a lot really? Of doctors. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> another thing you said that in another if you had to do something else you would have been a sculptor you're, you're so you're good with your hands yeah I do I love art as well I love uh, anything that has to do with beauty uh, I believe that the beauty is a value I think it makes us feel better it makes us elevates us to a higher level it's not superficial as people, some people think um, and I think also it needs to have a measure so again being Greek I'm saying everything in measure and you know uh, your plastic surgeon should be able to guide about what is measure and what is not. <laughs> uh, doctor, you said that you did a lot of interviews and you actually worked with space scientists to create the 111 skin product. That's um, right. Why did you do that? I, in one of the interviews, you said that basically that space, you can age a lot faster in space. So you actually use that as a way to create the line. So tell us more about that. 
Yes, so the, the space scientists uh, were very well informed about the effects of aging <coughs> in outer space. In outer space, it is like a laboratory for aging. So the skin ages very quickly because there's no, the pro there's no protective uh, atmosphere there. So the cosmic radiation, the ultraviolet radiation is very intense. So <coughs> in effect, everything that we do out there to protect the astronauts can be used on Earth to protect us. So they had access and knowledge patents on very um, uh, advanced ingredients that no one was using in skin care before. So together we developed the first product, the Dramatic Healing Serum. And that's the product uh, I give to my patients after surgery. Why serum? Yes, exactly. So the Y theorem is the evolution. So the, the, the Y theorem means the, my theory, the theory of uh, adding ingredients to the skin that will help the skin heal because the skin has this huge uh, power to heal itself. We know that if we, if we have an injury, we will heal, but we need to enhance that. And the more we enhance it, the better it gets. And that's what keeps us also young because this process helps the skin create more collagen and elastin, and that's what would keep the skin young. Okay, regarding, um, yes. uh, I want to ask you, uh, masking. Your line is all about masking, so many masks, and I honestly love them because you have the blemish mask, the rose mask, like you have something for everyone. I have so them all here. I'm, 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 <laughs> I, I love them by my mask. so much. Uh, I, I, I'm gonna tell you something, I love masking, but honestly, when I started using yours, it was another level. Another level. No, really, like, and I feel like a lot of people always buy their moisturizer, their serum. They, they ignore the toner sometimes, the face wash, but masking is not something very common. So how do you get into that? Creating so masking, again, it was a culmination of, of factors. Uh, I have to give credit to my wife, who also uh, helps in the company. She's actually the CEO of the company. And she uh, had the idea about masking. My contribution was that I knew about the potential benefits from masking because we use uh, products like the one we use, for example, in the biocellulose mask uh, in, in uh, plastic surgery. So we use masks to help the skin heal faster. So for example, open wounds, burns, if you put a biocellulose uh, barrier, the, the wound will heal quicker and better. So that gave me the idea again. So why not use something really scientific in skincare? So One on One Skin is all about bringing science to skincare, giving products and methods that actually work. And they are also nice to use. They, they need yeah. to look and feel luxurious, in my opinion, for people to have the motivation to use them again. It's a medical uh, brand, but at the same time, it has a, that uh cool coolness to it you know what i mean this is what i also like about it it's uh, not just a very it's not bland it's exciting the, the brand the, the items you have i've been i've been using it for now almost three months and honestly i i i'm all about skincare and i've also not noticed that you always say that healthy skin is so important this new generation now i feel is very into skin i think back in the day people were not as knowledgeable yeah. so you always promote this non-invasive procedures skincare tell us more about that yeah, this, this was what I call a 360 approach to beauty. So uh, I, I, I'm the first one to say that plastic surgery is not for everybody or is not for every time uh, of your life. So plastic surgery has a purpose, has a point, it can be the best solution, but there's so many other things a person can do to maintain youthfulness and healthy looking skin. So yeah. that's, that's why I believe in non-surgical procedures. I believe in this good skin care. I believe in uh, a healthy lifestyle. Uh, and that's where one more skin fits in, in this uh, organization. Yeah. Another thing, how, do, how is it working with your wife, Eva? Yeah, it's great. I think, you know, um, it has a lot of advantages because we are very aligned about what we want. And um, she understands the consumer side of the business of so being a woman and being uh, someone who uh, values her looks. Uh, me uh, also working on the uh, uh, creation of the products and the science behind the products. So the two work together. And that's uh, Very well. glad you mentioned that the, the products are cool. I, I'm, I'm happy to hear that because we want yeah. them to be cool, not because they were made by a doctor not to look good. And, yeah, uh, it, has a cool, it has a cool vibe to it. You know what I yeah. mean? I, I like the packaging, I, the masking. 
I, I before my live with you today, I just had a, did a mask in the morning. It has something um, youngish as well, and I like that. It's proof that a lot of uh, celebrities uh, use the products, and uh, it always gives me great pleasure when I meet people who I have never met in my life before and tell me about the products that they use and how they love them. So, yeah, they, they are amazing. And let's talk about now more skin, uh, since you're a, a medical doctor. Um, a lot of people in our part of the world suffer from pigmentation and it always is very long lasting usually. So tell us more about how are ways to prevent this, uh, this issue. So and yeah, if this came from 111 skin you recommend. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Well, pigmentation is one of our most um, important areas that we focus. A lot of our products ha have been um, uh, created to prevent or to treat pigmentation. For example, we have Lunar 28, which is a system uh, we developed in the clinic. We use it for 28 days and it is similar to having a, a peel, but without having the side effects. So pigmentation is a big problem. Uh, most of the adults I see have some pigmentation issues. Uh, not all, all of them, of course, serious, but then they can progress and become more serious. There are some very serious pro problems, such as melasma, that will require attention of a doctor because just products will not be enough. Yeah. But for the vast majority of, of people, 90% of the people using the right products and taking the right measures to protect your skin from the sun will help you avoid these problems. Problem. Uh, it, it will require a system, not just one product. It, it, it requires a good cleanser that will prep the skin. Uh, it will require a toner that will prime the skin for better absorption of the mm -hmm. products. And then it will require combination of uh, something like retinol. Retinol is very important in uh, treating and preventing pigmentation, uh, but always use it at night. Uh, we have created the retinol um, oil, which is a very balanced product. 1% is the highest concentration you can buy uh, on a department store. So you, you use that uh, together with some um, mild peeling factors and uh, daily cleansing of the skin to have healthy skin. And of course, vitamin C is key for pigmentation. Uh, again, we have created a booster that you can add to all of your uh, products in order to get extra help on that field. Okay, what's your opinion on peptides? A lot of people are saying you should use peptides. Does it really make a difference? What do you think of this product? Oh, absolutely. I mean, our whole line, the reparative line, including the white theorem, is based on NACY2. This is our patented group of ingredients. It's full of peptides. So peptides are key molecules that work on the cellular level in order to do certain factions. So knowledge of which uh, peptides to use can help the skin in multiple ways. Uh, for example, on our deep buffing mask, we have a hexapeptide that improves the circulation of uh, the, the face and uh, takes the buffing away from the face. Uh, that's just one example, but let's go back to the serum, which is our hero product. NACY2 is a group of peptides. It has been proven in the clinical uh, studies we've done that it improves collagen, it reduces wrinkles and improves pigmentation. That's amazing. Uh, now as a doctor, I'm gonna ask you, what do you do with patients that come to you with a picture of another person completely and they wanna look like them? I feel being a doctor also is like being a therapist sometimes because you see a lot of people with uh, confidence issues with, or with wrong expectations or, or very high expectations that they cannot reach. How do you handle this situation as you're a surgeon? So as well, how do you do this on a day-to-day -day basis? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a psychologist with, with a scalpel. That's how I call myself. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. it, it, it's, it's a process that definitely I like to know the, the motivation. I like to analyze the personality. I like to understand why they do the things or they want to do the things they want to do. But um, I have to say, as of recent years, uh, social media has put a lot of stress on people's minds about how to look and why uh, they have some uh, models in their minds that they, they want to look like. And I have to say, I don't get often people like that in my clinic, but occasionally I will. And most of the times, if I realize that this is uh, something that has been an obsession or something that is out of the norm, then I will actually refer them to someone who can talk about this with them. Uh, however, the majority of people 
I, I, I meet and come to me for help, they get ideas. They look at someone that they like and say, doctor, I want to have a rhinoplasty. I want to change my nose. Um, could it look like that or can I go? So most people understand the difference between the faces and how it's feature of us plays uh, in a different yes. way. Uh, but yeah, there are occasion, occasional patients that sometimes I have to say, no, no. you have to wait, <laughs> or no, you, you won't get that. <laughs> yeah, what do you think of the ponytail lift? Do you, are you a big, uh, are the ponytail lift, like the eye lift here with from, as yeah. a facelift, are you pro that, or do you feel it's worse on certain people? Yeah, it's for certain people. Uh, as we said, the Y facelift is mostly for the lower part of the face and the neck, which is this yeah. area. For pony lift is mostly brow and mid face. So basically, it, it, it gives the same effects if you were to put your hair on a ponytail and pull yeah. backwards. So it's more about this. And for some people, that's what they need. Again, it's more about during the consultation process in my clinic, I will analyze the face, I will take pictures, and I will listen to the patients. What do they um, care about? What are their concerns? And then tell them what will look good, what's the aesthetic uh, ideal. And for some of them, yeah, lifting the forehead, the brows, and the mid face is the right thing to do. So uh, okay. I believe in that as well. Uh, of course, I've been asked to ask you this question a million times by everyone, which is since you do liposuction and you do all these things as well, I've been asked about what is a good solution for cellulite? Because in our part of the world, in the Middle East, and I think most women have a big issue with cellulite. And a lot of people now are talking about a machine called Selfina or injections that are cued quo. I think they're called quo. What do you suggest in terms of this case? How is it something to maintain? Yeah, yeah. I, have to, I have to say cellulite is, is a very difficult problem and it's not uh, one type of cellulite, there are different types of cellulite and different reasons for that. But for the most, <coughs> for the most uh, uh, people, uh, cellulite has to do with lifestyle and genetics. So um, uh, hormones also play a big role. That's why cellulite is by the vast majority a problem of females and never, almost never of males. You so, guys are lucky. <laughs> I'm saying all this because sometimes the, the, nothing would really completely work on cellulite, but there's a lot of treatments that help. Uh, we use a combination of treatments. So we use mostly non-surgical. Uh, you mentioned or, already the injections. So mesotherapy can be very beneficial for cellulite. Uh, LPG, which is a method of um, lymphatic drainage massage on, on a routine level, uh, helps a lot. Uh, but also treatments like skin tightening, such as accent, uh, can be very beneficial as well. In okay. some cases, surgery can play a role. So for some areas, for example, the uh, lower abdomen plank area or the thighs, a thigh lift or a tummy tuck can help if the cellulite has advanced in such a, um, to such a degree that nothing else will help. Okay, and you do thigh lifts as well? We do. Yes, I do. We do tie lift. What, what's, um, if you had to say what's your favorite procedure, what's you, what do you enjoy the most in terms of surgery? What is it? Uh, I like the variety of plastic surgery. I don't want to be, and that's one of the reasons I chose plastic surgery, because it gives you this terroir that you can really perform a lot of different things. I like beauty in general. Uh, however, more and more, <laughs> more and more people come to me to see me for their face. So I do work a lot with facelifts, rhinoplasty, eyelid face. jobs, yes. Uh, rhinoplasty, eyelids. Uh, at what age do you suggest um, uh, the eyelids to be done? Do you think after 40 or it doesn't have an age? Yeah. So yeah, the eyelids, it's a very good question because eyelids uh, have the thinnest skin of our body. So they are the first area to show aging signs. And some people also by uh, genetics also have a different appearance and maybe they have a hooded look. So it can be earlier than other procedures. So early 40 sometimes it's, it's, it wouldn't be very early 40. Yeah, or later after that. There are some non-surgical procedures that can work around the eyes. For example, laser treatments uh, or thermos is another one that can tighten the skin. And in uh, selected cases, we can use either your own fat or some um, good fillers to fill the tear through under the eyes. Yeah. So a combination of treatments. But in, in the, in the pe for people who have really aids around the eyes, a combination of a brow lift and blepharoplasty, maybe with a little tiny fat injection can be the best solution.
So if anybody had to get uh, three products from your line, what would you recommend? I would definitely recommend the Y theorem. This is the, the hero product. This is the product that does most of the things that your skin needs to do every day. It's the heavy lifter, so use it every day. Um, then I would, uh, I would recommend the eye gel. The eye gel, now we're talking about eyelids. Yeah, it's, exactly. it's one of our best seller. It's um, rich in so many ingredients, including vitamin C, peptides, and um, it will bring brightness under the eyes, tighten the skin. Mm -hmm. And finally, I couldn't stop without mentioning um, the beauty dose. The beauty dose is supplements. So oh, yeah, skin, skin doesn't only need things by application on the surface, but things that we can ingest. So uh, a lot of patients, again, most of our products are created by needs of patients. So when they come for surgery, they tell me, oh, I take this supplement, I take this, what should I take? And it was very, you know, difficult for me to give all this explanation. So I finally made my own mix. I put all the vitamins, all the amino acids, zinc, everything the skin needs to stay healthy in one capsule, and I gave it to my patients. So it's, it's great to use it uh, every day. And you ship to the Middle East, to Saudi Arabia, and oh, you can Absolutely, ship. yes, we do. Yeah, and we have three different ones. Uh, the reparative is the, the one for everybody. We have another one called Clarity, which is for skin that is prone to acne or blemishes. Okay. And we have the Intense, which is for more mature skin and the skin that uh, actually has pigmentation problems. So three different ones. They can be mixed. Uh, I usually take one of each every day. One of each. I'm going to get the intense one for the pigmentation because I think I have, I'm definitely going to order this. It's amazing. Another thing, do you believe in uh, ingesting collagen every day? The short answer is no. Um, collagen, of course, is not going to hurt you by uh, taking it, but of course, it's very expensive. Uh, collagen is just a protein that once it comes into our body, it gets broken down to little tiny amino acids. So then we have to absorb it and then we can do, our body will decide what to do with it. It's not that necessarily that it will bring uh, up more collagen. Um, so uh, it's not going to hurt you, but, you know, I, I believe more in having the right nutrition. Uh, the, if you have the right nutrition, then your body will create collagen. So as simple as that. Yeah, honestly, I like your honesty about that because, you know, a lot of people, there's a lot of myths out there. Have yes. this, you'll burn more, do this, you'll get it. So it's nice to have... Uh, a real honest opinion instead of having a million things. But seriously, these pills are like uh, exciting. I'm going to definitely order. Um, tell us more about uh, things that you want. You, you, you prefer people to prev like preventative measures for bad skin. What to well, do? I mean, the, the, the number one is really taking care of uh, the sun and protecting your skin from the sun, especially for people who live in the Middle East. The sun is very intense and it's a, it's a constant threat. Uh, most of the problems we see with skin come with the sun. So it, either that being aging, drying, pigmentation, um, serious problems that can become skin cancer, they all come from the sun. So that's very important. Uh, drinking a lot of water, uh, it's important to, to maintain a natural habitat for the skin. Uh, getting enough sleep uh, because the skin really repairs itself during the night. Nice. Uh, and there's this a cycle of hormones that um, not just for the skin, for the whole body that are created when we sleep. So w when that cycle is broken down, then we age faster. It's not just the skin, but the skin is key on that. Um, and of course, avoid smoking, uh, all the bad habits, <laughs> uh, balanced diet and um, you know, uh, getting a good advice from a, a, an expert on skin uh, to guide you through, through the most difficult questions. Okay. Uh, my last question is, uh, what, what are your expectations for 111 Skin in the next five years? Uh, well, we are very excited. I mean, the, uh, one, one Skin has become really something bigger than I ever thought it would be. It's definitely much bigger now that... Uh, um, the practice in London, it reaches out to millions of people. It's a global company. Um, I like that it just gives back to people what I believe uh, from the beginning to create, which is healthy skin. So why do we 
why do we bother create another skincare company? Because we feel that we need to give health. science to skincare. We need to give people healthy skin because that will give them confidence and will give them uh, happiness. So the, the, my ambition is to augment this and to reach to even more Perfect. people um, and also expand it in areas like uh, spas. Um, uh, we are very happy to have um, some very luxurious spas in your region that do amazing Are treatments you? with our products. <laughs> Are we there? Yeah, we have uh, um, the, the Jumeirah uh, group oh, hotels uh, provides uh, and um, the Mandarin Oriental in uh, Dubai as well. Uh, I, I visited recently in October and I, I saw the level of expertise they have reached is very high. It's, it's amazing. So we want it to be not just something you have to do, but an experience people are looking forward to do, to take care of the skin every day, because it should be a pleasant experience, not That's a chore. Yeah. And you come for visits. Uh, do you do any surgeries in Dubai or not yet? Are you planning on doing I, that? I, I'm considering it. I haven't uh, done. Uh, as I said, uh, my clinic in London keeps me very busy every day. <laughs> I know. I'm just, but, it's hard to uh, make two of you. Who knows in the future? We'll see. Yeah, because you know, this is the issue. You know, sometimes many people want, like, would like to have visiting doctors like yourself, but you guys are always so busy. So I can understand. But at least we have your brand uh, to remind us of you every day and what to do. Well, thank um, you. I've been using your brand religiously. And honestly, I, I'm going to tell you this. I love it. And I'm someone that is like, a, I'm a skin fanatic. And to me, this is something, as you said, skin is everything. Even for your aging process, you can do a million things, Botox, fillers. But if your skin is not good, it's, um, it's a big problem. So, um, well, you, you, have, you, you look like you have great skin. <laughs> uh, honestly, I just had a baby uh, a month ago. So oh, I have so much pigmentation. You cannot imagine the amount of pigmentation I've had this pregnancy. So uh, I'm definitely buying intense. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> great. But, uh, and, and, and also the, the intense line, the black diamond products are all... Um, no, I have pigmented. Yeah. But yeah. I couldn't choose retinol when I was pregnant, so this is why now I'm starting to use yeah. it. But um, so start yeah. with with the retinol. Start slowly. So you use it once a week, only at night, and then okay. go twice a week, three times a week. So it needs to be gradual because it's, it's gradual. Time. Yeah. Okay, good. You told me I was going to use it every day. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> thank you so much for your time, and hope to see you in London when I come and visit. My pleasure. Yes, please. Anytime it would be. I will. I will. Great. Take care. <laughs> Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.